In the last two episodes, we prepped both the B5 and the TT for winter. Now that that's pretty much done, I think it's time we shift gears back to improving both of the cars, this week focusing on the S4. I have two completely different mods planned for this car today, and boy, do they make a difference. Ever since I wrapped this car in green, these turn signals have completely stood out. They're cloudy, there's overspray, and the bulbs themselves are just really dim. This car already has upgraded headlights and taillights, so I figured we'd give these indicators the same treatment. I was looking for a cost-effective upgrade, and what I ended up getting was a lot cooler than what I was expecting. I had two real constraints when looking for a replacement for these. They had to look nicer, and they had to be LED so that they were brighter. These popped up online, and they were concerningly cheap, but they seem to fit the bill. Not only were these LEDs slightly darker and cleaner, but they were only $12 shipped, so I figured even if they didn't work, this would be interesting to look into. Little did I know, they are way cooler than they have any right to be for that price. Installation was roughly the same as the original pair, though I added a little bit of 3M tape to get it to sit a bit more flush. Really, the only irritating thing about swapping over to these was the fact that you can very easily lose the original bulb down into the fender which adds a little time to the overall install. Even turned off, these are an upgrade. However, when you turn them on, they become something really cool. Yep, they're sequential. Did I know that when I bought it? Absolutely not. I think that's half the fun of ordering a really cheap mod on eBay. A lot of times it won't work, and other times you might just luck out. And in this case, I think this is a really cool upgrade. I adjusted them both to be a little more level, and we were good to go. Now let's get to the main event of today's episode. To really appreciate why I'm so excited for this upgrade, we need to go back. I'm talking back to what the car looked like when I bought it, specifically what the interior looked like. When I bought the car, all I could see was potential. Interior, engine, exterior, the whole car was just filled with it. I try to consider all aspects of a car when I work on a project. I don't want one part of the car to be way nicer than the rest. As I worked on the car overall over the course of months, I made some dramatic changes to the interior. I wrapped the trim, got new carpets, replaced the door cards, put in a head unit, and pretty much just cleaned up the entire interior. I even moved the boost gauge to a much more factory looking location. I am by no means saying this interior is perfect, it's far from that, but it is loads better than it used to be. With one, make that two, glaring emissions. Today we're talking about the elephant in the room and upgrading the seats of my V5 S4. I was initially planning on starting the suspension build this week, but I did a little bit of thinking. These seats are kind of the only ugly thing left in this car's interior. Obviously, there's a few small issues, but these are by far and away the worst part of the interior. And they're the first thing you notice whenever you open the door or get into the car. If you're the passenger, you notice the tear, and if you're the driver, you notice the spring nearly cutting your leg open. Something had to be done, and I've wanted to replace these for a long time. At first, I was really considering just having these seats reupholstered, but the more I thought about that and the more I shopped different options and places that would do it, the more unrealistic that became. It's not just the leather that's bad, all the foam would need to be replaced as well. And at that point, I'd just be building a whole new seat and the cost wouldn't really compare to something aftermarket. I'm not saying I'm never going to reupholster these seats. In fact, I might do it myself to learn and for fun. What I am saying though, is our seats now have a successor. Let's talk my criteria for these seat replacements. First and foremost, my biggest constraint is that I need to be able to fit in the seat. I work out a lot, and because of that, a lot of bucket seats simply aren't an option for me. And since I'm the person who drives the car on a daily basis, my fitting in it is rather important. As an extension of that, I firmly believe that half the fun of building your own project car is sharing it with those people that you care about. That further narrowed down my choices. I wanted something that reclined, fit me, and I could adjust with a slider. Fixed back seats are lighter, yes, but this car is not a race car. I don't like my cars to sit. I like to sit in my cars. So a seat that's comfortable is honestly a big criteria for me. One of the coolest things about these seats is they come with brackets specifically designed to work with the B5 S4. These took out a lot of the guesswork, which honestly helped my decision immensely. I didn't have to worry about a universal bracket failing or whether it would fit to the car or pretty much anything like that. These came with the seats from the same company and hopefully they work just fine. Now let's talk more about the seats specifically and one of my main considerations when picking them. Aftermarket seats can look fantastic in a car, 
if they look like they were something that could have been in that car from the factory. Two examples to illustrate my point. Let's say you have the nicest track seats that money could buy. Their styling is going to be aggressive because it has to be. If you throw those seats in a daily driver, it's going to look really out of place. The same thing can apply the opposite way. Let's say you have a hyper track prepped car. It's fully gutted, has tons of aero, but the front seat is the front bench out of an F-150. See my point? Doesn't really match. All I'm getting at is you want your seat to match your style of build. And for me, that means an OEM plus upgrade of the styling of the original seats from the car. I want similar horizontal stitching with the added functionality of the new bolsters. I also didn't want any crazy colors that would contrast with the white and black interior that the car has. Keeping all of that in mind, here's what I settled on. These are all black Corbo RRXs. These are by no means their most aggressive seat. However, they are one of their widest, which should allow me to sit just fine. First things first, I am blown away by the materials. It's a type of vinyl material that feels a lot like leather, and it's really breathable too, which is a huge bonus for those warm days. The bolsters are also very firm, which is a major improvement over the non-existent bolsters on my stock seats. I love the horizontal stitching on the back portion of the seat. That really does remind me of the horizontal stitching on the OEM seats, which was my goal. The only real quality issue that I ran into was the top of the headrest got a little bunched up in shipping, though I have a hunch that was shipping's fault and not Corbo's. Now that it's out of the box though, that should fix itself over time. I also absolutely love that the back of this seat is black as well, and not that fake carbon vinyl material that a lot of them have. The price of seats range a lot, and these are not exactly the cheapest you could buy, but they're by no means the most expensive. This company's been around for a long time too, so you know they know what they're doing when it comes to seats. Plus, they sell a kit that lets you convert them into heated seats, which we'll do in the future. In other words, I am totally stoked to get these in the car. I decided to start with the passenger seat on the off chance that we ran into any issues and I needed to move the car. As you'll see in a little bit, that was a good idea. Once you wait for the electric motors to push the seat as far back as possible, there's some Allen screws in the front that you need to take out, two on each side of the seat. These screws are primarily what holds the seat in place. The back of the seat is not actually screwed into the car whatsoever. It's screwed into a rail, which is then screwed into the car. But once these screws are out, the whole seat will literally just slide along that rail into the rear of the car. Tilting the seat also gives us access to the power harnesses underneath, which just so happened to be what I removed next. The two rails in the rear each have a cap on them. This pops off once you get rid of the screw holding it in place. And then you're literally able to just wiggle the seat out the back. I found it's generally easiest to get one side out at a time and then pivot the seat the other way. But overall, these seats are really easy to remove. And taking these out leads me into the next benefit of these aftermarket seats, the weight. If you look online, it'll tell you that the stock seats, including their bracket, weigh about 97 pounds each, and that feels about right. According to Corbo's website, these new seats weigh roughly about 27 pounds. In other words, a notable difference. Since I had the seats out, I also took the opportunity to thoroughly vacuum the car. I also found a little over a dollar and change, which will absolutely be going towards future mods. I slid the bracket into place to see if the measurements lined up, and everything looked great. Everything was spot on, so I decided to start prepping the seat for installation. I started by attaching the bracket to the seat itself with the supplied hardware. Once the bracket was in place, I moved on to assembling the reclining handle, which was as simple as snapping on a few plastic parts and threading in a few screws. Now that this was fully assembled, we were ready to do the final part of installation, which is to transfer over the part of the stock seat that connects to the rail. The general instructions on the Corbo website say to use all the stock installation hardware. Only one issue. The brackets on the original seats that slide into the rails don't come off, like, ever. Removing them from the original seat would be possible, although it would not be reversible. So I wasn't the biggest fan of that idea. I sent an email to Corbo, but it was late on a Friday night, so it would be a while before we heard from them. 
I feel like I can't really catch a break lately with this car or the TT. We have the seats. The seats are awesome and I am gonna run them either way. We've just gotta find a way to get them in the car. Get these seats in eventually. It's just, I'm gonna have to wait until they send me the proper racket or remedy the situation somehow. At least the $5 turn signals I bought on a whim were cool. New day, new perspective on getting those seats installed. I think we can get them to work, and today we're gonna try to get them to work. They say you need to use the stock hardware, which in my mind would mean you need to take out the stock little bracket that slides into the rail, but that is riveted in place or press fitted, something like that. Either way, we can't remove that. But I was looking at how other brackets that I know fit, i.e. the planted one, works, and it looks like all they do is just have a steel bracket that mimics that original shape that slides into the rail and bolts to the bracket itself. Why don't we try to do this? I've got time, I think it'd be fun, and worst case scenario, we find out something that doesn't work. Either way, it'll be fun to do. So let's go to the hardware store and see if we can make something happen. I went to the hardware store and found a flat piece of steel that would serve as an interference fit into those rails. This, along with the hardware I bought to install it, is a lot thicker than the OEM material used in the original seats, so it's easily going to hold and support our weight as well. All the materials I bought to build this were thicker and stronger than the OEM materials too, which is a nice safety feature. Plus, it's always fun to work with metal. I also only plan on running these as long as it takes for Corbo to send me their version specifically designed for their bracket. They got back to me and it looked Looks like they just forgot to put that in the box when they sent the bracket out. We'll swap those in the second we get them. At this point in time, I just wanted to make something that would work, and I love every chance I get to build something out of metal, wood, or pretty much anything. Someday I hope to buy a shop specifically to work on these videos and build things for the channel. Until then, the open air shop I use works just fine. Well, these are not perfect by any means, but I did it by hand as opposed to using a plasma table. So, uh, it comes with the territory. I'm more than happy with them, and I'm excited to see if these work. I figured it would be easier to test my creation with the seat bracket removed from the seat itself. That way it was easier to adjust in the rail. I had to play around with how many brackets I used as spacers, but overall, my idea worked. So I reinstalled the seat bracket to the bottom of the seat and continued with the installation. With my creation tested and working, the seat was now in place and we were all good to go to move on to the driver's side, following nearly identical steps. You'll notice on the driver's side that the seat belt buckle has two wires connecting to a red harness. These are the wires that measure a resistance to tell if you're buckled or not. So it's important that we transfer these two. Now that both the driver and passenger seat were in place, we were ready to step back and see what kind of an improvement we made.
To say these seats level up the interior quality of this car is a dramatic understatement. Before these, I don't think I really realized the full extent to which those stock seats detracted from this car's interior quality. This interior is not only a nice place to be, but it is a good looking place to be. I absolutely love the way these seats look in the car, and I think they complement this interior especially well. I specifically love the horizontal stitching on the back and bottom of the seat and how it mimics that original look of the B5 interior. Before today, the limit of this car's cornering ability was literally my ability to stay in the seat. There were no bolsters on my original seat because of how worn they were, so I literally just kept sliding out of place. These inspired confidence and make me want to drive the car even more. They also feel sportier because they're snugger and your seating position is lower than those OEM seats which feel a little bit like driving a bus. Rather than feeling like you're riding on the car, you're sitting in the car. And honestly, I think this is one of my favorite mods that I've done yet. And this is only the tip of the iceberg for what I've got planned for this car. Thank you for taking time out of your day to watch my video. If you enjoyed it, learned something, or want to see more, consider dropping a like and subscribing. It's the best way you can help support me and my channel. I've got a lot more planned in the next few weeks, so I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you again. Have a wonderful day.